Hello and welcome, students of AOE4, to my humble house of learning. In this three-part series on the Japanese, I will showcase a new and flexible opening on land maps that allows the Japanese to transition into 1TC aggression, 2TC boom, or even fast castle in a very smooth way. The focus is to make use of the Japanese farms and TC upgrades early on. So, Daimyo Manor, and then later on Daimyo Palace and Shogunate Castle, as well as the Kura Storehouse to play them almost like the English, whose safe food and easy transition timing allows for a lot of flexibility. So here we are in part three of this flexible Japanese build order. If you have seen one or both of the other parts, you can use the chapters I provided below to skip the opening. If not, I will now explain everything step by step. So we start out by sending five villagers to the nearest straggler tree for 50 wood. You can also hotkey these five villagers already, since we will be using them later to age up. The remaining villager builds a farmhouse at the berries. Once that house is built, we will be researching our Dark Age wheelbarrow, Towara, which makes gathering berries just as fast as gathering sheep, and so this villager does not need to run back to the sheep or anything, can just stay on the berries. These five villagers will drop off the wood, and could now go on the berries as well, since it doesn't make re a difference really. And if we want to save sheep under our town center, because you know we may be denied food later, like let's say there's knights raiding uh, our berries or, or longbows, um, that is when we may want to send those onto the berries. Um, also, if we want to uh, scout very aggressively to deny our opponent sheep on the map, we can also do that. Um, but remember, that berries become even better for the Japanese with every wheelbarrow upgrade. And so if we can save berries for later, we should do that. And so in this example, I sent my scout on a more defensive route um, towards the middle at first, and then all around this near side so that the scout comes back to my base at two minutes to minutes 10 to drop off sheep so that I don't have to worry about running out of sheep. And this is why these villagers go onto the sheep that is already slaughtered by the first villager out that was rallied onto sheep and then automatically one of the villagers will go and uh, take out the next sheep and so I don't have wasted time with um, five villagers doing a clubbing animation or anything like that and then the next two villagers go on gold first one building a forge next one will come out and also go to gold all the while I'm scouting in the pattern that I described and now, the reason why we got the 50 wood will be revealed, because we're going on stone. Now, three villagers will go on stone, and obviously we will build another forge. That's the wood that we need. And this will allow us to age up just before three minutes, and also get our TC upgrade, the Daimyo Mana, immediately after aging up. Third one also goes on stone. At this point, two minutes in the game, the scout is almost back. And we rally onto food again. For two more villagers on food. That way, we will have nine on food, two on gold, three on stone. And from that point, at two minutes 40, we start rallying onto wood. And we start by rallying onto the straggler tree. Also, our scout is moving to the opponent's base to find out what's happening there because we need to know what they are doing before four minutes so that we can make our transition and decide what we want to do. In this case, uh, we will be deciding to go fast castle. And I'll explain how that transition works in a second. Um, just before three minutes, we drop off food with the five villagers that we have already hotkeyed and we build the cross storehouse. Obviously, if we are afraid that our opponent has some strategy that allows them to uh, attack us really early on, or they have scouts or something annoying us, we could also use this villager, but typically it should be fine to just use these. The next two villagers coming out also go on the straggler tree. And then these five villagers and the three villagers from the straggler tree will all go to the main wood line. You can shift to them. I will, I will do that in a second. 
and we build a house here on the berries because once we go on the berries this will allow us to have less walking time as you can see they are now shift queued and the next villager go coming out so after the three here the villager at four minutes goes out and builds a lumber camp at the wood line the next one coming out also goes to wood so that at four minutes 20 we have those five and these five villagers all going onto wood so that we will have 10 on wood and at this point we queued the daimyo manor this is because we've decided to go fast castle at this point because we have scouted the base and at exactly four minutes 10 for 15 maybe we have enough stone for those you know 300 stone that we need for the daimyo manor and because we've decided to go fast castle we obviously need a lot of gold for that so the three villages that were on stone drop off and go on gold so we have five on gold obviously we want to man those farms so there's a villager going to the farms immediately and we start rallying onto food in this case we start rallying onto the berries um, and now all of these villagers that we had on wood we obviously don't need them if we want to go fast castle because what would we do with all that wood but we want to be able to make some units if the opponent decides to attack us so that is why i built a barracks you can build any military production building that you want you can you know try to defend with archers it, it really depends on what you scouted what your opponent is making um, afterwards these five villagers that are the same villagers that i used to build the landmark go back to food so now our split is 12 5 5 at 5 minutes 20 and we continue rallying onto food the entire time and all we do is you know scouting um, I'm, I'm choosing to go a more greedy route and, and explore in this area here but obviously uh, in a real game you should probably just go to your opponent's base and, and just see what, what they're doing uh, now I'm prepping my castle age already so um, I decided that I would be going with um, the equivalent of the knight um, the mounted samurai for the Japanese and this is why I built a stable already um, you can obviously choose to go with any other unit but typically going fast castle and then going knights is a good idea so that is what I'm going to demonstrate here this is why I built this um, in some cases you know if you're being attacked if, if you're being raided you might want to um, instead first build some walls or build an outpost here all of that would be completely fine it would be smart to do if you're being attacked um, you know if you're being attacked you might also produce some units but let's say your opponent is doing 2TC and hasn't really started um, doing uh, being aggressive or they are um, also going fast castle then in this case you can just do it this way you don't need any defenses now you always want to build this these stables um, where you also want to build the landmark so in this case I have decided to build the landmark right here in this area with all of these villagers um, but if you know if you want to be more defensive and you want to um, maybe delay your age up by 10 seconds um, you know you might want to build it all in the back so then the stable should also be in the back now I built some houses also preemptively built some more houses and obviously building houses with the Japanese you always want to build them at least two if not four tiles away from the main TC because you want to build farms uh, around your TC later and so if you have a space and um, you're not being attacked um, then building it four tiles away is probably optimal for gathering later on and now I use the nine villages that I had on the berries to age up with the floating gate and I keep rallying onto food um, I still have five on wood five on gold and all the rest is rallying to food always um, getting villagers on the farms as well once they pop up and when these villagers are done building the floating 
uh, gate, they will go on gold. So that I will have 14 on gold. And because I will have this many um, villagers on gold, I also get specialized pick in the forge. You can also get it from the cross doors, of course. Um, and that is because I don't really have anything else to spend my resources on, and this will just make it much more efficient. Um, I could also, obviously, if I'm being attacked and so on and so forth, I could be making horsemen, I could be making an urbanum, um, or, you know, barracks units instead. Um, in that case, you wouldn't go for specialized pick. But if your opponent allows you to do that, you should do that. Now, once the floating gate is finished, all these villagers, as I said, go to gold. And the reason we built it exactly next to the staple is because once the priest comes out with um, the relic, we will put it into the staple immediately, making this effectively work as three staples. I'm also go getting my Mabanaman already, because why not? I have the resources. And there we go. Shinto Priest is out, stuffs the stable with the Yoroshiro, and now this acts as, th as three stables effectively. And this is why we need this many, like 14, 15 on gold, and it's also why we need to rally onto um, food the entire time, so that we can make um, villages and also produce from the stable. And now we're just going to continuously produce mounted samurai and get relics with the Shinto priest. And obviously um, in a real game you would now be using um, the lances, the, the mounted samurai that you've made to protect the Shinto priest or to raid your opponent or you know actually move them in, in somewhere. Um, and we just continue rallying to food now. Because we need a lot of, uh, of villagers on food. Um, and the moment we have 24-ish on food, we can decide to go on wood or gold or anything else, depending on what we want to transition our unit comp into. Also, the moment we have enough wood, we build a Shinto Shrine. I'm obviously building this Shrine in a very optimistic position here, um, just so that, you know, I can... Uh, get the relics uh, in it as quickly as possible. You can obviously also build this more defensively. Um, and then you should just start adding some more houses, like I'm doing here. Um, also, um, refresh the lumber camp, you know, get some walls if you need, whatever, whatever you need, um, you know, depending. Uh, but remember, you need a lot of villagers. You need basically need a split of 24, 14, 24, 15 actually, but if you have relics, then obviously um, you get more gold to just sustain unit production from this one stable because it's three stables. Um, so you don't need to build much more production than this um, yet. But the moment you're getting close, um, you should start doing that. And also the moment you get the gold, um, you can start getting your upgrades depending on the situation. Um, you know, getting um, your third wheelbarrow is really good. Um, and once you have more than 10 on wood, you should also think about double broad eggs. But yeah, that's basically the build. That's the fast castle version um, of, of this build. And the third and last um, version that you can go to from this uh, opening, which I think is very flexible and can be used pretty much everywhere. So thank you for considering this build order. If you have any questions or suggestions, please comment below. And if you have any ideas how to optimize this build even further, let me know, because learning is what we do here. And yeah, thank you again. And with this, class dismissed.